have a very simple message for you for this sunday i intended to talk on prayer of a church at jerusalem as narrated in acts 12 i call it a prayer without any motivation why i call it like that because the church was praying though fervently without any expectation of a miraculous answer still that was a great prayer that destroyed the might of the enemy we read the narration of this prayer and other related events in acts stuff the incident took place 10 years after the resurrection of our lord jesus christ king herod agrippa the first the grandson of herod the great was ruling the area of judea during the time Herod the Great the grandfather ruled in the days of Jesus birth Herod Agrippa the first also was also the nephew of Herod's Antipas who had a role in the trial of Jesus King Herod the first was a proselyte a gentile converted to Judaism he respected and followed the Mosaic laws ever since the conversion of paul persecution of saints came down the church was growing and spreading rapidly the church has been experiencing many exciting conversions one after another then the tragedy happened a heavy blow on the church the apostle james was murdered influenced by Pharisees and Sadducees among the Jewish leadership Herod decides to arrest some of the apostolic leaders we are not told explicitly why Herod intends to persecute them Herod Agrippa the first was not as cruel as some of his family members were but popularity was his ruling passion so he arrested apostle James and killed him by sword as he found that this pleased the Jewish community and the religious leaders he arrested Peter and kept him in prison with the intention of murdering him this was a new development in the history of the church James the son of Zebedee and the brother of John is the first of the 12 who followed Jesus to be executed James is certainly not the first Christian to die in faithfulness to Jesus Stephen as described in Acts chapter 7 verse 58 to 60 was martyred before James but uh, James is the first apostle who followed uh, Jesus who was uh, martyred by the enemies The martyrdom of, of James was a heavy blow to the church. Ten years after Jesus' resurrection, one of the twelve apostles has been removed from the scene. This was a grievous loss to the church. The church looked up to him with a reverence and affection which even the enemies would have come to know. He was one of the three whom the Lord admitted to his church. closest intimacy the death of james shattered the illusion that somehow the top enjoyed a unique divine protection james in particular might have thought to have been protected specially he was one of the special intimates of jesus often mentioned with his brother john and uh, peter But let us remember that Jesus promised no special protection for even his closest followers. He warned them to be ready for persecution as uh, uh, narrated in Matthew chapter 10 verse 16 to 26. All Luke tells us about the incident is that the beheading of James pleased the Jewish leaders and people. In Jewish law, death by soul was the penalty of murder or apostasy it was an anonymous mode of punishment according to the jews 
to make matters worse hero seems bent on a systematic dismemberment of the movement and flushed with his first success he next arrested peter he placed peter in prison under a secure guard it was the time of the seven day feast of unleavened bread which immediately followed the passover herod was a strict observer of the law and the festivals so he wanted to avoid the possible uproar of people against the murder during the festival time so herod kept peter in prison peter was chained while he was in prison and at night he was sleeping peacefully what gave him sleep in such a situation is not mentioned in the bible he looked skillfully just opposes the power of the state and the power of the church the power of the state imprisoned peter and intended to kill him the power of the church went to action by earnestly praying to god for him in continuous fervent united prayer the church intercedes for peter prayer is the only weapon the church had and it is more than enough look persons prayer as the natural atmosphere of god's people and the normal context for divine activity peter in the prison was expecting a stingless death soon we are not sure whether he was expecting a miraculous escape since his coworker james was executed the other day peter also would have been expecting a same fate still he gave his life unto the hands of his lord and slept peacefully by his sleep peter models a deep trust in god's sovereignty we have no evidence to argue that peter was full of hope for a miraculous escape after some time we see an angel from the lord coming into the prison and asking peter to wake up and walk out of the prison but peter did not take it as real he thought he was dreaming luke relates peter's evaluation of his experience though awake enough to obey the orders of the angel he does not think what he is experiencing is real he thinks he is seeing a vision a street away from the prison and alone the, the angel having withdrawn peter comes to himself that is to a correct interpretation of what has just happened he affirms the reality the source the result and by inference the purpose of the rescue peter knows that the escape has happened in truth the lord has the same power to rescue now as he did when he delivered israelites from egypt that means peter in the prison was not hopeful of an escape he might not have been desperate but peaceful he expected death he was sleeping but trusting his soul into the hands of his lord still god rescued him that is very important no motivation from the part of peter no faith in a miracle no hope of escape did work for him it is god's grace and power that rescued peter it is simple because in the plan of god peter had a long duty to perform we can summarize no other reason any martyrdom is still a mark of god's sovereignty not a sign of his weakness martyrdom is glorious purpose for us not that he does not love us any rescue is a sign of the triumph and advance and a mark that nothing can thwart the accomplishment of his purposes bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith saith the lord of hosts if i will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it and i will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field saith the lord of hosts
and all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Since the arrest of Peter, maybe for the seven days of unleavened feast, the church had been praying. Thus long were the disciples kept waiting, their prayers apparently unavailing. Their faith, as would seem from the sequel, waxing feeble. They too lost all hope in a miraculous escape. This is not the first time the church prayed for the rescue of a saint. They were a faithful church. That is why they came together to pray for seven days, even the phase of danger. They came together to pray for Peter, aware of the situation that the soldiers of the king may arrest and kill them. Still they came together and fervently prayed for such a long time, even during the night, for the imprisoned saints. That means they were praying for James also. They prayed for James as he was arrested and put in prison. They prayed with hope, expectation and faith since they believed in a miraculous protection over the intimate disciple of Jesus. But their prayer was not answered. James was killed. Their faith shattered, their hope gone. They had no words to explain God's mysterious ways. They felt defeated and abandoned. They lost all motivation to pray. They could not expect an escape for Peter. Still, they prayed for Peter. They prayed without any motivation. Why I say that they prayed without any motivation? The motivation they should have possessed is the rescue of Peter from death. But they hoped no such miracle. After the angel left Peter, he proceeded to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark. It was probably the gathering place of the house church to which Peter belonged. At the moment, fervent prayer for Peter was going on. They were praying even during the nights. Peter went to the house and knocked at the door. A maid servant called Rhoda was supposed to answer any knock uh, on the door during the night. When she came to the door, she understood that it was Peter. So overcome with joy at the voice of Peter, she left him standing there and rushed without opening the door to announce his arrival to the praying church. But the church did not accept her report. They could not believe that Peter is rescued and had come to their house. They were not expecting the miracle. They were praying with no motivation, no hope of a rescue. While the church members argue over the truthfulness of her report, Peter is left knocking and calling at the door. The very answer to their prayer is knocking and they do not believe it. They declare Rhoda crazy. When she sticks to her story, they conclude that it was Peter's guardian angel. According to the Jewish tradition, the guardian angel of a person would take on his attributes. They were telling that the guardian angel came in the shape of Peter to, to announce his death. Even while they are Praying for Peter, they find it hard to believe God actually answered their prayer. Their prayer was earnest, but their faith was not overwhelming. Their prayer had no motivation. What shall we surmise? I do not want to come to a conclusion that God will answer your hopeless prayers. Faith and hope are two important elements of a successful Christian life. But a formula of any kind is not a final way to release a miracle in your life. No formula is a sure way for a miracle. This church was praying even when there was no motivation to pray. 
they were distressed and hopeless they did not expect any miracle still they knew one thing they should pray prayer is the duty and responsibility prayer is not presenting a shopping list to our god prayer is a communion with the god remember god came every evening to visit adam and eve in the garden of eden not to accept a list of demands from them god came to them for a sweet communion with them prayer is a communion with god where we pour our heart not only is joy but also is despair and hopelessness prayer is the life breath to a believer as long as he lives in this world he cannot but pray the church at jerusalem knew it and so even without any hope for a miracle they went to their lord and poured out their heart god received it and acted accordingly the rescue was completed god's word spread around and the church grew thank you for listening to this short message may god bless you and meet you next sunday with another inspiring message once again thank you